A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers and ceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. You know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. In every place, your faith in God has gone forth so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. Responsorial Psalm the Lord takes delight in His people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. The Lord takes delight in His people. Let them praise His name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind! For whether is greater, the gold, or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift, or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? 
Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. One of the good things that would ever happen in our lives is being remembered by someone whom we don't expect to remember us. Based on experience, especially for teachers, on the first day of classes, we always find difficult to remember the names of the students, especially when there are many. Yet, we have no choice. We really need to remember all their names. The first names that are easier to remember are the names of the best students in class as well as the most naughty students in the class. Perhaps the reasons of remembering their names easily may vary, but for those who are remembered immediately might feel so proud in a positive way. It is because they would think that in one way or another, they have touched the lives of their teachers. Based on my experience, this is indeed true. In our first reading, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, thanking God for them. After being away from them for a long time, he remembered the Thessalonians and so he wrote to them. He was grateful for his experience with the Thessalonians. Paul's gratitude to God for them is not because they were perfect and sinless. In fact, Paul warned them many times for their immoral life. However, Paul recognized the work of the Holy Spirit in his teachings that transformed the lives of many of them. He was convinced that what transformed their lives were not his words alone, but through the Holy Spirit who was present in each of them. It was him who worked in the hearts of the hearers of the gospel being preached to them. If only the preacher speaks, then it only ends up to words. But when the Holy Spirit acts in the person who hears the word, then something spiritual is accomplished. But we need to give the Holy Spirit a chance to work in us. Otherwise, what we hear are just words that enters in one ear and go out to the other. Even in learning the Bible, the purpose is not just to learn it in the mind, but most of all, the purpose is to learn it in the heart. How pitiful are we when we read the Bible and when we listen to the Word of God without giving the Holy Spirit a chance to work in us so that the activity would not remain only an educational learning, but, most of all, a spiritual one. On the other hand, blessed are they who give God the chance to lead their lives by listening to His words, not only in the mind, but also in the heart and in their actions. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Help us to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, 
that, encouraged and supported by your holy word, we may embrace and always hold fast the joyful hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.